My name is Angela Bienvenu. The company my group would like to discuss today is Amazon. If you're unaware, Amazon is an e-commerce, logistics, payments, hardware, data storage, and media company. Their main site for, they are a main site for online shoppers, and they offer a plethora of subscription services for people worldwide. As of February 1st, 2018, Amazon listed a total of 566,000 employees worldwide. This is a 66% increase in a little more than a year. A huge factor is in this is an expanded operations during the acquisition of Whole Foods. While Amazon operates worldwide, their main headquarters is in Seattle, Washington, and Jeff Bezos, who is Amazon's CEO, has also stated there will be an additional headquarters coming soon, with the site to be determined. Amazon's structure consists of the S-Team, which is in sort of a hierarchical slash departmentalized fashion organization. This leaves the Amazon operating within the matrix structure where employees are grouped by their specialties and then by the product they disseminate. This enables Amazon to not only focus on the functionality of the company, but also to function on the products being delivered. While our textbook does not, does, excuse me, while our textbook does state power struggles often exist within the matrix structure, not very much research or articles existed that spoke directly to whether or not Amazon had power struggles. At the highest level, Jeff Bezos, who is the CEO, has a team of direct reports. They are called the S team. Each of these direct reports is responsible for a large organization underneath them. In a lot of ways, each of these senior vice presidents or presidents of the departments also set the tone for what is known as their own organization. These gentlemen are Jeff Blackburn, who is in charge of the investment and banking team, Andrew Jassy, who runs the Amazon Web Services, Jeff Wil Wilkie, who has built Amazon's supply chain and who was also rumored to be the successor for Jeff Bezos, and then of course this, there are a multitude of CFOs, comptrollers, and then some smaller organizational chains and contractors underneath each of these four gentlemen. Unfortunately, most of the research I conducted did not return such great results for Amazon, Amazon's culture amongst their employees. The turnover rate is extremely high despite Amazon's attempts to create better incentives for employees' performance and improvements in each department. This is largely due to unrealistic production demands and lack of specialized training for smaller hubs in the Amazon community. The attention to detail piece is expected to exist for, employee, for employees, but many of the polls from employees state that aggressiveness and outcome expectations are often not realistic. This often results in subpar performance. While Amazon headquarters does not, excuse me, does have core values that are expected to be echoed throughout the company, the immense number of different departments in Amazon leads to conflicting subcultures and conflicts amongst the rights and wrongs of the ethical work climate concept um, defined within our textbook. Jeff Bezos and his team, the executive team, recently employed a philosophy last year that aimed to reduce employee barriers to change in hopes that the company can return to a positive climate. Amazon has um, employee benefits to motivate employees. They have a medical plan and financial security plan, which is like 401k and life and accidental death and short-term, long-term disability. They also have paternity and maternity leave. And they also have um, adoption assistance, which I thought was really cool. They'll help um, qualify domestic and international adoption expenses including attorney fees, court costs, and travel. They have employee discounts and the Amazon Career Choice Program, which they prepay 95% of cost of tuition, textbooks, and related fees so the employee can focus on school instead of the expense. These are all um, benefits to help um, motivate employees they also have um, rewards for employees. They have um, employee stock ownership plans. 
So they have a restricted stock units. And on Amazon's website, it says, At Amazon, you have the opportunity to become owners of the company through the granting investing of restricted stock units. RSUs are a key part of our carefully designed total compensation philosophy to help us attract, motivate, and retain our, um, employees of the highest caliber like you. So I think that's um, one part that they're using to help motivate employees. Amazon also has um, their leadership principles. So there are 14 different principles that Amazon prides their self on, and some of them are invent and sif simplify, um, learn and be curious, hire and develop the best, insist on the highest standards, think big, um, and ownership. It says leaders are owners. So I think they are really... Um, investing in their employees and trying to motivate them to stay there, work hard, and be long-term. So in the news lately for Amazon, three main things. The first one is that Amazon is now integrating whole food into their business model. Why? It's because right now they are giving discounts or rebates to Amazon Prime customers. And so by doing this, we can see that right now, instead of having two standalones company, Amazon is really trying to merge with Whole Food and acquire their supply chain and integrate that into the business model. So we will see if the two pizza, if two pizzas philosophy of Jeff Bezos will be working uh, for the Whole Food uh, chain. Also, another thing is that right now Amazon is expanding into China. So you can forget about the e-commerce that we all know about Amazon. Right now, they are going to be a finance company that would do small lendings to small businesses in China. So we will see how it goes with that, but it highly doubt that will be, they will be able to keep that structure uh, because the cultural background and the way Chinese uh, people are working compared to the U.S. workers are working is completely different. And so instead of having small teams, I highly suspect that they will be a little bit more vertical with bigger um, department teams. And the third one is that at, right now Amazon is still going strong on the cloud computing service, uh, which will be really important to see for the next business model that I'm going to talk. What Amazon is doing right now is they are doing a mattress or a matrix business model, which means that those small teams are in charge of all their projects from A to Z and that they also switch uh, one of those employees and they put them into different departments. Um, they are doing this because they want to share the knowledge that each one of them have. So by being extremely agile and being able to share the information without impeding on the other department's project, well, the company is really able to create a good network of communication and reduce the noise. So what could be better for Amazon right now is that, uh, personally, I think that Amazon has a really, really great business model. But the question is, does it apply to all of their segments? Amazon is a fast-growing company, and what we talk right now, we talked about the cloud computing services, the e-commerce services, and they are even expanding in China to do some small lending uh, to small businesses um, over there. And so could they really keep that business model or the two pieces philosophy that Jeff um, uh, Bezos uh, was, had at the first time of the funding of the company? Well, the answer on this is I don't think so because uh, all the segments that are operating right now under Amazon are all different. They all have different structure, they all have different philosophy, and they all have different services or products to offer. And so if you keep a department that small for, let's say, shipping, or if you keep that department extremely small for marketing, well then you will have not necessarily noise, but diverging ideas. And because of that, I do think that Amazon should be a little bit more concentrated on the vertical side instead of spring it horizontally like the matrix. Um, personally, matrix would be good for engineering departments or would be good for everything that is related to accounting or other more um, project-oriented de departments. But when it comes down to uh, services that are requiring more creativity, it would be better to have a bigger group. Um, or for lending purposes, uh, it would be able to have a bigger group so that they would be able to have a better normalization on their decisions. Um, so based on that, I would say that the main problem for Amazon right now, what needs to change, 
is that they need to detach themselves from that philosophy, even though it is a great one, they need to detach it and be more adapted to what they offer for segment purposes or for products or services.